Hello, I'm Jerry Kirkpatrick, and I'm teaching the fundamentals of metal shaping. This is going to be a two-part video. Uh, the first part, which you're watching now, is going to be on how to make a tucking fork out of Harbor Freight chipping hammers. This one it will be held in the vise. The video number two will be on the handheld uh, tucking fork, which is made out of the same Harbor Freight chipping hammers. For making your tucking forks, you will need two Harbor Freight chipping hammers. The only other material that you will use other than the two chipping hammers is a piece of one inch square tubing, six inches long, with a 125 wall, and a piece of half by two flat bar cut two inches long. The first thing we're going to do is cut the two handles off. You want to cut these off as closely as you can to the head so you don't have that much uh, cleanup to do. The next thing I'm going to do is go over on the belt sander and smooth these off, almost erase them so you can't see uh, any of these places where the handle was. And then I'm going to bead blast it up into hair uh, so I can mark it for the length that I want. I've got both of the uh, handles smoothed off quite well. This one you can hardly even tell where it is and I've bead blasted this much off uh, all of the paint so I can mark it and when I bead blasted it I found a different color um, up in this area here about an inch from the length and when I file tested it, I can tell this is way up in the 60s somewhere in the Rockwell Sea. And this area back here is only in the 40s. So they, in some way, uh, temper this area here and probably on the back side. It's a little softer, but it's up in the 50s also. So uh, they just get a material that will uh, harden just in a certain area. They'll heat the whole thing and only quench that small area. Interesting. At least it's interesting to me. So uh, I know that I want these three inches long uh, sticking out of the block and I know that the block that we're going to be setting these down into is half inch. So I have to mark these uh, three and a half inches long to cut them off in the lathe so they'll be the right length. So all I do is get a piece of three inch tubing, put a piece of half inch on it, set that there, and I have my soapstone sharpened only on one side so it's marking exactly at whatever this height is. Now that I've got them both marked, we'll go over on the lathe and cut them to length. 
Okay, so here we are at the lathe, and we're going to park both of these pieces off right at the three and a half inch mark. Okay, so we got both pieces uh, parted off and deburred. Now we'll go over on the table and find out how far we have to radius this corner off so they'll come together. If you notice when these are laying parallel, <clears throat> we have this taper here. We want these at an eighth inch apart up in here and you can see how this rear section here is has some space in there so what we're going to have to do is massage this taper right here you can see where they pivot on each other right here so what we need to do is continue this taper back a little bit so when we tip these in and get these surfaces parallel is <clears throat> not going to pinch in this area here. So in order to blend this taper in and get rid of this hard shoulder that's apparent on both of these I'm going to use a very coarse uh, belt on my belt sander. Okay, now I've got these two shoulders uh, fairly well blended in and it's not as severe now with the, with the taper. When these come in and become parallel, we're not going to have an interference right in this point. The next thing we're going to want to do is radius off this corner or this point. We want to get rid of that point. If you have the point there, when you bring the piece around, when you're doing your tucking, it will uh, dig in here or on this sharp corner. If you come around too far and leave a dent in the material and you cannot remove it. So what we're going to do now is make this whole end on both pieces a nice radius. And the way we're going to do that is we're taking, uh, you get one of those adapters from Harbor Freight. This is a 3 8 and it fits in your drill motor. 
And for this particular uh, size, a 5 8 deep socket works just great. And it fits in there and it's not too wobbly. So we're going to take a and set that in there maybe a half inch or so. Take a piece of tape and wrap it around the socket and then squeeze it nice and tight on the piece here on the fork and then put that in your drill motor and now we'll go over to the belt sander and radius that off okay what we're wanting to do is radius this end off and we we'll just use the belt sander here with a fairly coarse belt Now that we have both forks uh, tapered, we have this corner knocked off, nice radius on both pieces. The next thing to do is get the block of half by two by two and lay it out for drilling the holes where the two forks will be placed. If you pause the video for a second, uh, you can write down all the dimensions for drilling the base where the two forks will go. First you drill with a quarter inch hole and then drill it out to the 11 16th finished size. For the home shop builder, uh, you can use the old square and scribe to lay out the holes for your uh, base for drilling the holes but for the uh, fellows that are building race cars and other machines and stuff uh, the way I do it is I draw whatever it is whatever bracket that I want to make in a CAD program and then I just cut the pattern out and glue it <coughs> to the piece And what I use for gluing this down is just the old rubber cement, just like you used to use in the kindergarten. The nice part about using this method is you can use the perimeter lines to actually cut the piece out with a bandsaw or whatever you're going to be using and uh, if you use an on mark optical uh, center punch uh, you can get these at McMaster Carr and they're called an optical center punch uh, if you use one of these your holes will be precise every time
as you can see the holes are exactly in the center or the center punch marks are exactly in the center of the holes. Now the optical center punch doesn't uh, set a very deep hole so I like to give it another little center punch uh, to set the hole a little deeper to give my quarter inch drill, my pilot drill, a place to catch. Now with that little, little bit more uh, radius in there, the center, the web of the quarter inch drill has a place to, to catch. Now that we've got the piece center punched, let's get to drilling. And obviously, after we drill the holes, we want to deburr it, countersink it. And there you have it. Just because I like to have my tools have a little nicer feel and to look a little bit more professional, I like to radius off the corners on a piece that I'm making. Okay, we've got the holes in it. Corners radius. 
I belt sanded all the way around the outside and bead blasted these two pieces. The next thing to do is to tack weld them together. So I just take the base, set it down, drop the two forks in, place a piece of 1 8 inch flat stock in there, and just put a rubber band around it to hold them all together. Get them straightened out so they're parallel. In line with one another. And I use just a uh, piece of 035 to make the tack. And all I want is a very small tack right on the outside. And then we'll weld them complete from the back side. Okay, now that we've got them tacked, just slide the rubber band off, take that piece of eighth inch out of there. I just use a piece of two inch square, set it down in there, upside down. And for doing this portion, I use a sixteenth rod. And I try to just do a rosette. I'll use very little rod and uh, you want this surface flush when you get done making your weld. If not, we can grind it smooth. There you have it, and I can see that this, uh, the bottom of this is quite smooth and flush. So I'm going to go right ahead and weld the vice piece on. I just have my square set to half inch. This is two inch square, this is one inch square. Just hold that in there, get that squared in that direction. Get it all squared up, and I'll make one tack on this corner over here. Okay, we've got that tacked up. Now I'm going to see if it's square. It's not perfectly square. I can see a little gap here. So I'm going to straighten this out and then I'll weld all the way around. Okay, I've got my second tack on. Uh, got it nice and straight and true. So now I can start welding the piece, the piece complete.
there you have it. Now that we've welded all the way around, we'll let her cool off and I'll show you what it looks like when, when we come back. And here we have a completed uh, tucking fork welded all the way around and ready to get to work. Thanks for watching this video. If you got some good information from it, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want some more information on the optical center punch, I'll leave a uh, link to McMaster Car under the description. Also under the description will be a link to how to make a tucking fork number two.